looking to hold it down. Be, I think, the first Chicago win to win Combo Breaker. God believes Noto won one, and then Esam won one. The zero count? Zero one. Oh, 20, zero one. Zero one. The original Combo Breaker. That's right. Yeah, but does he still reside in the Midwest? Because then it counts. It counts. Yeah, then it counts. Oh no, no, he he was in SoCal at the time, so he it was does in not SoCal. Count. But we're still gonna steal that one for the Midwest. It counts. <laughs> we're taking that one. All right. Hi. I'm about it. All right, Tyree looking to be the second Chicagoan to do, uh, you know, the business here. But, you know, Esam certainly just this big wall in front of him, and he's just throwing out all these projectiles, making it difficult for Tyree to make magic happen here. And sheesh, he is just putting on a hurt in here for him. Oh, okay. Oh, my goodness. And even when he wants to retreat off stage, Esam has that option covered with either Thunder Jolt or either with Forward Smash. He's just not allowing him any access back towards center stage for free. Wow, he really just slide and kill kicked in there. That's a, a moment where I think Tyra is like, I, I have to figure out this matchup really quick. We saw him adapt pretty well to Meister, but just not enough to clutch it out in that Game 5 scenario. So his adaptation is there, but Esam is not allowing him the time of day, gets the Thunder, gets the big early lead. Mm -mm. Esam coming off of a lot of momentum in that last match. You know, that was certainly a quick one. Got the blood flowing here, and it's starting to show here versus Tyra. He's cheesing, he's just slicing away here. Though, I gotta say that each one of these combos that he goes for doesn't do a lot of percent, but one thing that it really does is that it changes the positioning. You know, certain characters get combos and it just kind of keeps the opponent in place, but Esam gets a combo, takes you from one end of the stage to another and forces a whole new situation for you. That's why Pikachu strings can feel like they last forever sometimes, because like you said, it, it's a multitude of resets back and forth. It's like, I, I think you're gonna jump after this quick nair, I'm gonna follow up with the fair, and then you're gonna try to retreat to the platform and I'm already there, because this character's so fast. And the lap is online. We have 2% lead on the second stock here. Okay. Can't quite get the grab. Bayonetta, again, not with the best grab range in the world, but when she gets it, she can definitely do some devastating things. She has that high-profile grab that Esam might be able to use some crouching to maneuver around, because these these little this little electric rodent here, look how low he crouches, and Bayonetta's grab is pretty high in the air. Zero Six Sam's going to kind of have that problem, too. But this is no problem at all for the Chicago, and he finds the witch time, finds the up smash. That's right. Now bringing himself back into this match slowly but surely. 83%, not a bad position to be in. Not the worst, obviously not the best one either, but you have to take it for what it is at this point. But we're back Sheesh. in there. What do Sheesh. we got? Okay. Excellent DI away at the, again, SDIing the witch twist matters a lot, but that afterburner kick too. Oh, tried to go for the drag down forward air real quick. That probably would have went right into a backer had he been positioned correctly. Okay. Oh, and then the SDI. He is the SDI king. He has tried that way up, but Tyree was waiting for it and was able to get the second one. Maybe looking for an auto link kind of situation. Tyree playing with a lot more confidence here. Beginning of this match, definitely not in Tyree's favor, but now we got ourselves a 1% differential between both of these two talented players. And that's There's it. the down tilt right into the up air. Slow and steady is going to win the race. And I hear the, the Chicago crowd really coming to life there for Tyra this time. I know there are a lot of Game & Watch fans in the crowd. It was kind of 50-50 split. But Chicago definitely backing their boy here versus Florida. Mm -hmm. Wow. Did you see Tyra? That was a comeback. A most was, that was a that was, of a comeback. That most certainly was, man. When he lost that stock finally, 83% that he was able to lap and then make up. That was really good. Esam was at like 12% or something when he got the first. It was, it was a, a stomp of a game one, maybe it he looked was, like. Maybe he was kind of chilling. Maybe he understood that Esam was going to come out the match, come out into that match with a lot of momentum because of how the MVD set went. So he probably figured, I'm going to let you show your hand a little early, then I'm going to kick up the Jets on you. I mean, 83% to a player of my caliber mm. might be a lot. But somebody as talented as Tyre, he's like, 83%, I can make that up in my sleep, dude. And you, you see it? In full display here. Okay, on Lila Cruz, though, we're going to get Jeez. this started. Just going for the quick damage. Not even going to go for any Witch Twist scenario afterwards because he knows how Esam can avoid this. Mm -hmm. Okay, gets the drag down for it right into the tilt. And then again, more up air assaults. Both of these two characters do a pretty solid job here. Oh, my God. Look at the micro spacing. They do such a beautiful job here on Lila. And the auto cancel availability there with those quick attacks. And you're gonna neutral get up in the forward smash? No, uh, sir. How did he know? How did he know? He's in this man's head. Okay, up tilt chain. Good stuff, didn't throw out a fourth one. There could have been the opportunity of a bat within there to kind of reset the situation. Perfect understanding of how to combo Bayonetta. It's trickier, like you said, because of the availability of which time, because the availability of bats within. Those are all things that can throw off your, your bread and butters against other characters. 
but if you just lab the certain percents against Bayo, you can be very effective. Esam is living proof of that. Mm -hmm. This is some beautiful stuff right now. It's high level smasher at his peak, gets the forward throw, and he's really looking to spike. He's looking to spike Tyroid. Couldn't quite get the quick position he needed there to land that forward smash, and that's due to, to Tyroid just adapting on the fly. He knows he's in the deficit. We've seen the same scenario in the first game, 80 something percent. Then we see the reset. There's the backer. Obviously not going to be enough to close out the stock, but at least sends the message. I'm not going to let you have this match for free. Tyra trying to get out of this bad situation. Stuck on this platform. Isim not going to let him land for free. You see him all applying simple pressure. There's a little bit of up airs, but this should do it. Yes, the frame, frame trap track. works out brilliantly for Tyra. Similar situation to game one. Okay, we've seen this in the first movie right now. 100 and something percent here. He had, he's in a deficit nonetheless. Now he has to try to turn this around off of a few conversions. Pikachu has some really going, really strong setup, excuse me, but you know his inability to kill with ease is something that can kind of hinder Pikachu in these high tense moments. And Pikachu can kind of fall into Sheik-itis a little bit, where it's just none of your kill setups work. And look at that, the Thunder not going to find it. And that's another breath of life for Tyroy, looking at almost max rage. That's We've right. seen that movie for sure. Oh, God, yes. You know, just a, all these small, minuscule hits really add up in the long run here for Tyroy. So he understands that as long as he doesn't have to get grabbed or as long as he doesn't get hit with a forest smash, he'll be okay. Spikes him down, wait, okay. and then the up smash. No tech on that really weird knockback from the Thunder, and where was he going to go? Where, where are you going to go at that point? Esam's reaction time, not going to let you get away with that for free. Easy cleanup, easy game. Yes. Okay, you can breathe a little easier now. The last thing you need is to be down 2-0 versus someone as talented as Tyroy. Tyroy's going to get his choice, though, and I believe you hear the switch into the DLC stages. It's going to be that dreamland. We talk about how he favors this stage so much. Oh, my God. You the know, wind I, on this stage can offer Pikachu some weird quick attack cancel angles depending on where it's blowing and which direction Pikachu's going, I believe. It's a very weird interaction. That's the kind of thing that Esam labs endlessly. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, he labs it out because some of those situations would be good ones, but history has shown some of them could also be bad as well. Yeah, Esam's student of the game, if there ever was one. Mm -hmm. The man spends so much time just working on Super Smash Bros. Oh, yeah, he's in class late. He's the last one to leave, first one to get there, man. That's definitely his entire mindset. All Worth right. mentioning, both of these players, the player that puts them into losers, Meister. Meister. They both are hungry for that run back. Yeah, they both want that revenge, man. They both have to get past each other. So with that being said, Esam starting off this match, I think, on a stronger foot here. You know, At the a same small time. lead, nonetheless. Oh my goodness. And the good DI there to get out of the way of the final hit of Forrester. That could have been enough there to take out Esam. Woo, woo. Scary stuff. And catching it with just the, the lingering hit of that thunder, but going to the ledge. Tyra evened this up pretty nicely. All things said and done. There's a lot of craziness. And you're going to take that one, not falling for the same setup on Lilac. Uh oh. Okay. Oh, now that was some good positioning there from Esam. The quick attack canceling, the way he maneuvers around the stage, just kind of baited out an unsafe option here from Tyra. Talk about microspacing. That yeah, was literally. Deep perfectly put that quick attack in a spot where Tyra thought he would get a witch time, but instead, you just witch time nothing, and then the up smash was there. Okay, gets the down throw. Okay, gonna eat a little bit of percent, though. Tyra looking for some of these fishy options with, like, the afterburner kicks. Gonna go for this back throw and send the Pikachu off stage. Look for another kind of setup. All right, down tilt here. Up air works, and Tyra not too far behind. No, sir. Definitely has what it takes here to turn this match around and bring it back into his favor. This match here, when both players are 1-1, is probably the most pivotal because somebody's going to go up after the opponent has won a game, too, and they might be able to shift how they feel mentally about the rest of this set. If Tyra takes this game, that takes away Lilat for the rest of the set because that's the last stage Esam won on. But if Esam wins on Dreamland, then Dreamland would be the stage that is blocked by DSR. Oh, uh -oh. this edge guard is crazy right now. Even on Bayonetta. Okay, goes out for a quick wish switch right into the first piece of the forward there, looking to kind of outstall and outlinger Esam off the right side of the stage there. Okay. Esam's playing around this witch time, and oh, okay, gets the air dodge with the thunder, but not enough to KO. Doesn't get the strong hit. Not quite. It's the turnaround Tyroy could need right now. Esam with the phenomenal SDI to all these combos. Quick air dodge, and then the. Immediate answer back there with the aerial of his own. 
Nair at the ledge should be enough here, but oh, gets the down throw instead. But the Thunder follow up. The DI was perfectly positioned for Esam. Going up 2 1. Wow. Tyroid. Strong, very dominating start to that first match. But as the stocks began to fly, it was Esam who was able to kind of chisel away at him mentally at that, too. Tyroid in, in deep thought. You see it here. Not going to go for a character counter pick. I think he has confidence in this Bayonetta, especially after the Meta Knight kind of hit a, a brick wall in the game of watching game, in the winner's final set. You know, that that uh, Meta Knight, um, you know, it was strong. It was really good, but it just wasn't his Bayonetta. That's the only real way to put it. Mm -hmm. You know, we know what Tyra can do with pretty much any of the characters in the game. I mean, I feel like to place top eight in a national, you have a pretty strong understanding of how to play pretty much all characters, or at least not how to play, how to play against them. But Meta Knight just was not working for him here. And there's just no place like home for the most part. All right, buying a lot of space here is Tyra, but these little scrambles are starting to go Esam's way. Okay. Sheesh. Ooh. And again, that seems to be the story all day. You know, in this top eight, Esam is able to find these jab lock setups, but the ledges of the stage seem to keep messing him up. There's the up throw. Immediate air dodge there. Waiting for Esam to get back on stage. Tyra just taking the stage control, putting it in his back pocket, waiting for maybe Esam to overcommit. But we see how well he could just space onto the slower Bayonetta. And these throws have led to nothing. Look at this go. Yeah, both of these two guys not being able to go for any of their throw conversions. Little miss spacer on a lot of their setups. Yes, now, oh, oh my god. Go. Yeah, and I like how Tyrae got up that time. That was that adaptation there from him, but that was even better adaptation there from Esam. He's like, look, he's not going to fall off stage this time. He's going to try to roll. And I'm going to throw out this force smash. It's going to last a lot longer than your roll is, that's for sure. All right, going just raw up smash. Not going to find the mark. I mean, you, you got to make him respect it at the very least. Mm -hmm. Now Tyreek looking for a way to seal out this stock. All of his just patented tried and true ways of confirming off of Witch Twist haven't been working. And he's even having trouble just finding stray backers and crossing up onto ECM's shield, which has just been such a good thing for him throughout his entire career. Yeah, for sure. That's something he's typically good at. You know, Bayonetta, amongst one of the best back airs in the game, depending on who you ask, they could tell you that it is the best. I know I'm not going to go that far, but, you know, the Bayonetta enthusiasts certainly speak very highly of her back air. High stakes moments, definitely a good option to just toss out relatively safe. Beginning of the match, not bad either. Obviously, it has some combo ability in it. He's Sam poking and prodding just slowly but surely. Yeah. Getting good damage in. Oh, that... Dive kick not going to lead to too much. Again, great DI from Esam. Yes, beautiful stuff and kind of clawing his way back into this. 50%, not a bad position to be in at all. But you definitely want to get the percent back into your end of the spectrum. Oh, and now, okay, Tyre finally showing just aggression at the bottom of the stage, and that pays off with the chase continuing on that up air. I can't lie, that was probably the latest KO off the top that I've seen in Smash 4. I was for sure like, all right, Esam, he's all right. Uh-oh, Tyroy looking good what right now. Takes him to the top. See you later. Oh, we got a game five. Oh, my God, Lord Skirm. He said, look, you are the Bayonetta Slayer, but that doesn't matter here. Home sweet home, my home state, my home city behind me right now. I have the ultimate power up over you. And, you know, Tyroy has had that game five magic a lot, but did he just spend it in game four? I would hope there not. Is a question, that's a question to be asked, of course, because mm -hmm. I've seen him come up with those crazy comeback goals. I was to see a lot of two-stock victory. Yes. I've seen him come back with, like, he's at, like, 155 against a Sheik at, like, 20, and that's he finds right. the KO. You know, and as devastating as that question is, unfortunately, there is only two responses, either yes or no. Mm -hmm. And remember what we said about Esam winning that game three. That means Lila is back on the table because Esam's last game he won on his dreamland. That is the stage blocked off by DSR ruling. Okay. Okay, a little too quick here with the sliding hill kick. You know, this is this is Lilat. You know, you got to be a little bit more positioned, uh, you know, for something like that. That just really puts you in a really bad spot if it whips. And that's All really odd to say here for Bayonetta. You know, there's not too many moves he has that put her in a really awkward spot. But sliding hill kick randomly into neutral, that will do it to you. Okay. A lot of empty hopping right now, looking for the stage to tilt back into their favor. Yeah. You want to wait out these tilt transitions sometimes. And Tyroy on Bayonetta, one of the best characters to wait that out because of the way the, the bullet climax works. It fires at that specific angle that can just be so good on Lila, and that must be why Tyroy left it available to Esam despite the advantages it gives Pikachu. Right, yes sir. 
the same time, Esam can close the gap on those bullet guns so fast because he's just such a quick rodent character. Yes, and you know, in, in the event that the game goes into a situation where it's both guys tossing out their projectiles, both of these two characters can do some devastating things with them. Thunder Joel has opened up a lot of doors for Esam in the past. We've seen that, and then of course we've seen what Bullet Climax and Bullet Arts can do for Bayonetta. You know, that's to say that Esam doesn't mm. low profile the Bullet Climax. He can't low profile the Arts, but the Climax though is a different story. Tyra waiting it out on this side platform. Again, maybe the, the tilting transition isn't to his liking, but now applies that pressure with the back air. This is his first percent lead, I think, on the first stop mm -hmm. in a while. That's until right. he got that kill in game four. Okay. Wow. Beautiful stuff right there. Gets the up tilt from up underneath the platform. Oh, oh where are you going? Yeah, where are you going? Stay off stage, good sir. Oh, the frame trip does not work this time. Esam's air dodge is in time and batting him away with the neutral air. This is tense, okay. Esam gonna get up from the ledge safely, restart this position. And All trying right. to find these dash attacks with rage, but oh, good tech! Okay. That would have killed for sure if there was no tech on the part of Esam. Most certainly, resetting the situation here. Tyra stuck on his ledge, gets the, oh, the first, okay, gets the first hit of Forrader twice in a row. Gets in there, shoes on the other foot now. All right, waiting it out both ways, okay, dash. The dab kick, I'm sorry, that's not going to be able to confirm into anything in this neutral going the wrong way for Esam. Trying to pressure with the thunder again. Oh, Ooh. but you re-grabbed. You Wait. can't do that. Oh, and he might have forgot about how tricky Esam can be off stage. Whether that means that he's trailing you down out there or not. This down tilt still is very threatening for Tyra. He can close this stock in a hurry with the down tilt up air combo. I do not believe that's escapable at this percent for Pikachu. No, absolutely not. Okay, there's the dive kick. Backs against the wall, not a good position to be in. He's off stage, but he gets out of the way of the Thunder at the last second. This is tense. We're looking, the winner of this is looking to fight the Mexican Game & Watch Meister in Grand Finals. It's a run back for both of these players. Both of them, I think, took him, they both took him to Game 5. They both played very closely. And now Esam, it's his turn to be a little campy here, except he turns it around with a quick attack. Yes. His campiness still has that slight aggression in it as well. Oh, yeah, you're certainly, yeah, you're out of here. All right, Oh, see yeah, he made sure he was out of here. He said, I'm not even going to go for the fourth throw because there's still that chance that it might not take you out. He put that confirmed damage on there. Now he has some ground to make up here. Now we've seen this in the first few matches. He has no problem doing that. Dash attack? No, no dash attack that time. No jab lock. Yeah, he's saying I'm missing a rare opportunity there to close the game. I think that would have been a confirmed KO. Yes. And now Tyra with a new lease on life here, maybe playing with house money. Yeah, you know, I think he was a little reluctant to go for that because in the last few matches, he would go for it while they're on the ledge of the stage and then he would just fall out of it. And that's something he just doesn't want to go for. Okay. And we've seen Bayo pull off these miracle comebacks before. Tyra did that to seal off a two stock in game four, but here comes the thunder. Not enough to count for Tyroy. Sneaking by that thunder as well. Uh oh. Okay, gets the up throw. Oh no. Oh, do we double got? up air, triple up air. We We're got? going to the top. That's gonna See do him. it. Tyroy with the turn around of ages. Chicago stays alive at Combo Breaker 2018. And Tyroy gets his run back with Meister. It will not be the Pikachu moving on. Wow, what a finish. Slaying the Bayonetta Slayer. Wow.